Hello and well, welcome into the programme. Coming up for you this week, some licence fee relief for broadcasters and the budget handed down, but the free-to-air players say it doesn't go far enough. We'll talk just what to watch in the sector as that election now fast approaches. From New York to Melbourne and now Auckland, where to next for the Real Housewives franchise? But first, controversial New Zealand media executive calling it quits. Our co-host James Manning has been across the ditch this week covering some developments in the sector. Thanks for giving me a heads up. I could have done that assignment for you. Thank you very much. But still, you get all the good gigs, don't you? Tell me more. Yeah, so is that blood on the floor or what? Yeah, it's not often we lead with the New Zealand media stories. No, it's, it's, so it's nice to have something a little bit different yeah. outside our, our usual beat, if you yeah. like. Yeah, look, Media Works over there, a private equity-owned um, media group. Got a lot of uh, radio radio stations, TV3, mm -hmm. Channel 4, been in the news. They've lost a lot of staff. That's the sort of pre-story to all this. Yeah. Over the last year, 18 months, a lot of senior staff have left the business. John Campbell? Huh? John Campbell and yep. friends, yeah, yep. yep. top billing, uh, nighttime Yep, I think uh, it was host. a 7 p.m. Exactly. weeknight. Exactly, sort of a lease uh, sales right? Yep, sure, yep. he went and they put a, put a replacement in. Yeah. Um, Paul Henry's there now, we had a short stint at 10, actually performing quite well. He's sort of associated with this story, but Hilary Barry was their star yes. newsreader. Yes. Now, get this, she actually reads the, she's on the breakfast show from 6 to 9 a.m., then she co-hosts the evening bull on it at 6 p.m. <laughs> that takes multitasking that, to a new level. That's how much TV3 needed Hilary Barry. And she got a life. And when a she, she yes, quit, right. she right. quit at the end of last week. Wow. Just said enough's enough. Yep, absolutely. Right. And this triggered off a massive media storm. The media really pushed hard this story. It was lead item across the weekend newspapers yep. online, really dominated. Mm. Uh, and this week was quite a significant week for MediaWorks because they announced the JV which we might get right. to in a second. We, but, we will do that in yeah. a second, but carry on. Carry and on. Um, so there was a, a lot of interest. In, and so the, the board, board had a meeting on Monday. Uh -huh. uh, the sort of expressed um, support for the uh, Mark Weldon, the chief executive. But so then, no heads rolled over Hillary? Because well, uh, in, in terms of to lose somebody or, you know, on someone's watch... Well, you could say they have the, the CEO's heads right, rolled. Right, right. I mean, Fair he said he quit, but yeah, I think okay. his, probably his position was untenable. Yep. Uh, we're looking at pictures there of... Yeah, that's now, him. That's Mark Weldon. Yeah, now, now, formerly so, ASX fame, right? He ASX 50. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he was... Yeah, it? well, I think when it listed, was it? Yes. He was the well, chief executive. I hope you don't remember this. Yes, yeah. absolutely. He was here at the end of last year talking wow. to the sort of potential advertisers in the business. But anyway, that footage is from Tuesday night at a media function. Several hours later, he left the function early, hasn't been seen, he's, he's left. Well, there's a job on. in the offing at ASX here, in <laughs> exactly. to run that company. Elmar's okay. gone, FYI, you knew that. <laughs> but uh, so the issue would be as well, come back to an Australian link with that private equity ownership, part ownership, because they had skin in the game with Nine, right, before that. Yeah, yeah, Oaktree, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Anchor. So yeah. there's a link, uh, trans Tasman link inextricably. Well, meanwhile, uh, MediaWorks, NBC Universal International Networks, uh, out with what? A, a, a yeah, so the, the channel there, Channel 4, was underperforming. They've been looking in the market, working out what, what strategy we, could, we, mm. could we take on to try and boost, get some more ad revenue, sure. make it a, a bit better proposition. They came up with the idea of uh, rebranding as Bravo. Bravo is a, a pay station everywhere else in the world, but it's going to be a free-to-air okay. in New Zealand. Uh, NBCU's done the deal. It was going to be a joint venture. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, presumably that's still going to proceed. Because um, right. when when we I did the interview, we'll, we'll see shortly. Yeah. We didn't know, of course, that the, the you know sure. there was speculation he might go, but he seemed to have maybe he was going to weather the storm. Well, here's your interview now with Chris Taylor from NBC Universal and uh, Ramona Singer as well, Real Housewives of New you York. Know, I should point out if yeah. I do look very surprised in the middle of this, it's. That something happened that I didn't know was going to happen, but I right. won't. Let's, but, yeah, let's keep it's, that it's a, quite a bizarre little <laughs> okay. few minutes. Yeah, here's that interview. Without any further ado, the Bravo content um, is is distributed through Foxtel through the Arena Channel. They have a deal that also also licenses uh, the packaging of Bravo, and that channel does extremely well on that platform. We also license the content in the second window uh, to free-to-air players in Australia, and it does very well as well. So. It's popular the world over. It does well in Australia. I think it's going to do very well here. 
and the uh, one of the key franchises is going to be Real Housewives. Uh, there's going to be several series run here, but uh, I guess the one most of the audience will, will watch out for is the Auckland. Yeah, that's why there's all this noise here. The Kiwis have just got their own housewives, so they're pretty excited. But we, uh, we started casting that in uh, just before Christmas, and uh, they were blown away, the, the producers were blown away with the talent here. It's going to be... Uh, it's going to be an exciting series, and I know the guys here are looking forward to it. I guess they do they um, they cast their mind over a city pretty pretty carefully before it's a, it's admitted to that franchise. Uh, yeah, to an extent. I mean, Matchbox Pictures, who did Melbourne, um, have you know just an incredible record and are, are well trusted by the the team at Bravo in New York. So they're in very good hands. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited. Great to see you. How are I you? I'm so excited that Bravo is now in New Zealand. <laughs> I'm so excited and too. And you know why? Why? Because I came to help congratulate you and I, and I love New Zealand. Do you love New Zealand? I love. I there love. you go. Ramona, tell us, do you think Auckland will make a good city for um, Real Housewives? Absolutely. I met the women who are coming on and each one is fabulous. I think it will be an electric show. And Bravo, they know what they're doing. So Have that's why I've been there for 10 years. When you first joined the show, did you think you'd ever be an ambassador for the brand or, or for um, Bravo? That's a very good question. I knew the first season I filmed, which was 10 years ago, that we'd average a million viewers, and we did. Bravo knows what they're doing, and they become an international brand. They have the best demographics for advertisers. They're a win-win for anybody, for the talent and advertisers and networkers. There was no more iconic a franchise than Bravo to, uh, sorry, than Housewives to launch uh, launch this channel brand with. Is it important you keep up your sort of individual careers for the Housewives when you're filming, but you don't become just TV stars? Well, you know what? I didn't start filming the show until my until I turned 50. So I was already a, an accomplished businesswoman, had um, very, you know, major savings, and I did the show really to help my ex-husband, you know, to broadcast his business. And now, being on the show, it's, just, it's fun. I enjoy it. As long as I enjoy it, I'll keep doing it. It's really, it's, it's a great experience. Bravo is a great to partner with, and it's so much fun. You engage with your uh, audience via social media. You've been doing a bit of that since you've been here in Auckland. H how has that helped um, keep the audience interested over the last decade? Um, you know, it's funny because, um, you know, social media has become such a huge business. I mean, everyone now goes on Instagram, Twitter. The newest thing is Snapchat. So I actually use it to call my fan base to say, where is Ramona? Guess where I am? Because I didn't want to reveal that I was in New Zealand. Chris, uh, you're, you're working towards a July launch. Yep. Um, what's got to happen between now and then to make it work? A lot of work. A lot of hard work behind the scenes. We've actually been quietly plotting away for the last last couple of months in anticipation that this would happen so that we could meet that July timeline. Um, so really a lot of work to, to, you know, get our marketing plan sorted and get the, uh, get the team working together. Of course, employing a local team here in New Zealand to drive the channel day to day. And just finally, the um, commercial opportunities, I guess that's something MediaWorks will be running, but will your, your team be offering sort of expertise in that area? We'll certainly be supporting them, as will the Bravo team in New York, in terms of, you know, packages, integrations, etc., that we can take to market. But the MediaWorks ad sales team's first class here. They obviously represent television assets, radio assets and online assets. So they've got huge scale and we're in very good hands with them. Chris Taylor there from NBC Universal Australia and New Zealand, and as well that cameo appearance by Ramona Singer, who you did uh, supremely well, James, to just sort of soft <laughs> shoe shuffle into a, a new interview, just boom. Yes, yeah, like, yeah. like camera bombing, that they call it. Well, that's, it's, you know, yeah. you would never it have known. It was great. It yep. was uh, exciting to see it. There. It's um, ingenuity with a smile on its face. Let's um, look at the performance <laughs> of the media sector, meanwhile, on markets this week. Here's a roundup. Evan Lucas from IG. The media sector this week continues to watch that election cycle very closely and we've had three years of, of promise uh, around the whole idea of the retrial being scrapped and it's clearly not going to happen this time around. Not only that, with the budget looking at the free-to-air televisions, they are clearly seeing that that 25% reduction in licensing is probably being a slight positive on the market, but certainly on a longer-term basis, probably not going to offset some of the costs that they have there. So again, the media space is being pushed around very heavily by the political cycle and they've missed out once more. The other part that caught my attention this week 
week is actually over in the US around what's going on at Fox and the jump in cable earnings is absolutely astounding and he's down to one and only Donald Trump. It clearly shows you how much of a drive he has to watching that. And they did see an increase of around about four and a half percent in their cable business. It's their largest earning part and their largest EBIT part as well. Very impressive numbers. It clearly shows you that the division and split up between News Corp and Fox about four years ago is continuing to play out to be the right sort of number and you can see that clearly coming home. So once again, Rupert Murdoch's movement to move Fox overseas has probably come out and clearly their cable TV is benefiting very well and will continue to do so as we move towards that November presidential election. Well, for more on what Evan was discussing, uh, not least of all that 2016 federal budget handed down this week, the reaction that's come from, excuse me, radio and TV broadcasters, James Manning. With me, James, uh, you know, there's always been leading up to this the view, and maybe you just take the Channel 7 Tim Warner uh, top line on it. You know, piecemeal, not enough. Wanted it to be more comprehensive. Has that line changed this No, nah, nah, no, look, absolutely not. There, right. there's, there was a little while where it seemed like those licence fees may be abolished or, or cut back a lot further than they ended up chopping them. Um, a similar sort, uh, thoughts from uh, Tans Paul Anderson, you know, local content remains under threat. That's, the, that's the, one of the big angles they're trying to push to politicians. Look, if you don't give us some of this licence fee money, yes. we will spend it, if we get it, on local dramas, uh, local content. Look, if we don't get it, we're going to have to really review what we're spending on them. And that's the sort of um, it's the threat the they're making, I guess. Sum up the Harold Mitchell. So Harold Mitchell's weighed in to this. Uh, what sort of heft has he given the discussion in terms of an investment call to arms? Yeah, well, it's a similar message he's going on to. Look, we need to act now to make sure broadcasters continue to invest, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, Harold's, you know, is, is there as a lobbyist for the, for the sector. I mean, the good thing about having Harold being your lobbyist, he'll get meetings, people will take meetings with him, but they know what he's going to say and it's, yeah. it's, he's just pushing the, the same line at the free to air broadcasters. Are. So, and, and then you were speaking to Paul Anderson only a week or so ago now, so yeah. he's been at 10, what, what, a consistent line there or something? To, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's pretty much that. They, they just want to get their hands on some of those licence fees they pay. They figure, look, you, it's the uh, disruptors that come into the market, whether it be Netflix or Google or with YouTube, all that sort of stuff. None of those people pay any licence fees mm -hmm. and they're getting all these, dragging all these eyeballs out of the market, getting a lot of ad dollars. And what, it's just not fair. Well, Andrew Maiden spitting tax, Astra CEO. Didn't yeah, it's interesting here getting Andrew Maiden's take on it. Of course, the uh, Astra, the um, subscription TV lobby group, if you like, saying, look, these are... Um, these are taxpayer-funded. Um, yeah, there you go. There, there's, there's the quote from him. Mm. Um, unconditional uh, free-to-air handouts because, you know, the um, they get things like the anti-siphoning list as well. So this is they get, you know, really they're just so protected here. Fifteen million dollars plus for SBS. Where's that been plucked for? What's what's that? How's that seen in the context of broader funding? For, uh, for that channel? That, that just sort of fell from the sky on budget? Yeah, well, they were cut. They've had cuts before. I mean, they've, um, they've been a chop back a little bit in the past, as has the ABC. But Michael Abid, I think, would be pretty happy with that. And indeed, he said he was this week. And I, mm -hmm. I think he's been genuine. They would have, they would have liked a little bit uh, better, I guess, in there. I'm not, look, these triennial funding packages, it's all a bit of a mystery. Well, there, there, there's been talk of a while, for, the, for a while, have they not about a merger? about doing it all under the one roof. Has that pretty much been put to I bed? I would imagine. I think, that, I think that's been put to bed, right. really. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. but then if we're talking next week about this surprise merger, neither of us would probably be no. terribly shocked. But yeah. at least at the moment, it looks like any thoughts of a, of a merger there is off, off the board. Talk to me about uh, Screen Producers Australia. If you are going to produce local content, what kind of incentives uh, or even, even content obligations uh, might come into play. Is that is that looking a possibility, or is that sort of a desperate last gasp from them? I mean, yeah, well, states, again, have, states have offered up incentives like Victoria clearly mm. and benefit from it. Is, is that not enough? No, no. They want to see something enshrined in some sort of legislation that, in, you know, look, if the networks are getting this money back, just don't take their word for it that they'll spend more on local drama. Mm -hmm. Put it in some sort of legislation, mandate it that that money has to be spent. Right. There should be a higher bar for, you know, the number of hours you produce, which you can understand, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that we're not going to take the, the trust of the broadcasters, no. but it would be good if they're sort of handing back this cash that it does go where they say it should. The, redu the reduction in the licence fee was always going to be welcome. So, what, the, the radio 
radio for Saturday. Yeah, much. look, radio was because the radio has never been talked about. And their fees are quite a bit smaller, I think. But mm. they've been very happy. I think they got a 25% licence fee reduction. They've come out and said thanks very much. You okay. know, so right. yeah, it's good for them. And it's a sector that's that's um, still doing very well. It hasn't been disrupted as much as some of the others. Speaking of which, doing very well, the Real Housewives of Melbourne proving a success for Foxtel. Which other Australian city, though, now is set to get its own group of housewives? We'll tell you after this. Voted best value by Cruise Critic, Evergreen's 15-day European River Cruise from only 5685, including flights. Plus, new France and Portugal River Cruising now available. Hurry, call your Evergreen expert today. One in six Australians has a hearing problem. Let's put your hearing to the test. Each one of these numbers has an everyday sound. Can you hear each sound? If you can't hear all the sounds, your hearing could be disappearing. Please call 1-800-425-125 now and get a free hearing check. You can stop your hearing from disappearing at Audio Clinic. Investing in a DHA property means guaranteed rent for up to 12 years. DHA is backed by the Australian Government, so it's secure. We'll look after your rent, tenants and day-to-day -day maintenance. Sit back and look forward to tomorrow. Visit dha.gov.au slash look forward. How do you turn wild animals into a tourist show? To make them perform or let people pet them? With cruel chains, starvation and beatings. Elephants don't do tricks or carry people around because they want to. You have to break them. Forced to dress in costumes and do tricks. Only cruelty could keep him here. Unbelievably, tigers are beaten into submission again and again so that tourists can pet them. Please help World Animal Protection stamp out the abuse of wild animals for entertainment. Our campaign is working. We've stopped the practice of dancing bears in many countries. These bears are now enjoying the safety of our sanctuaries, free from pain and humiliation. Animals are crying out for your help. Please call 1-800-626-316 or visit stampoutheabuse.org.au and give just $10 a month to end their suffering. As we approach middle age, bone loss slowly begins. Vitamin D helps strengthen your bones and Australia's number one vitamin D brand is Ostelin. Take the Ostelin vitamin D test now and assess your risk at dtest.com.au. Life expectancy is up. But what about lifestyle expectancy? Share market falls can leave serious dents in your retirement savings. But a Challenger guaranteed annuity is protected from market crashes. Google Challenger annuities. Welcome back. Last week, Wynn failing in its attempt to block Nine from streaming in its areas. Now the regional player has lost the Freeware Network as its broadcast partner. Nine's entered into a five-year deal with Southern Cross. Let's get more where the return to uh, co-host James Manning. James, what are the consequences of this? Yeah, bad week for Wynn at the end of last week, wasn't it? Um, and why would Nine want to be in partnership with someone who's trying to sue you? It just takes the edge off it, doesn't it? I mean, it's just yeah. another reason they they probably, you know, could be incentivised to move elsewhere. Gosh. Uh, Nine CEO Hugh Marks, uh, Grant Blackley, um, Southern Cross uh, Osterio, both business partners mm. in uh, before they both took on these new roles. So obviously got a great business relationship. And so Grant was once a ten. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, memorably. Yeah. yeah, I remember this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you weren't wrong. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> so you know, there was always going to be mm. a meeting of the minds there. That, mm. that there was, 
a good chance that they would get together. I mean, again. kind of slightly sidebar question, but what happens to that Win logo? It kind of always had the the distinctive yeah. uh, link to Nine. Yeah. If they've yeah. gone now their separate ways, the way they have, does that well, logo have to, have to pay be... a few bob? And get, yeah, so get but... an, a graphic designer because they'll yeah. partner with Ten, no doubt. So. Right. And um, th that'll be on there. Look at this all. Look, the future of regional TV. Some people have been mm. forecasting that it looks really grim. Looking at, we've talked about it before. It's, it's. They've certainly got some challenges at the moment. It's still good little businesses. What do you think Bruce Gordon's minded to do? Because he's sort of always now hedged his bets, hasn't he? He's, he's mm. got himself. Yeah, well, he's the got a big register. shareholding on the ten yeah. register. Yep. So look, well. look, it seems certain he'll do a deal with Network Ten to take there. It's, right. it's very messy though. Out when you get out into the smaller markets, who's got what sort mm. of signal? But we talk talking here about the main East Coast markets, Queensland, Southern New South Wales, uh, Victoria. Mm -hmm. Northern New South Wales is a little bit different because Nine actually own that. So. Okay. Let's talk about sort of the merging of uh, and integrating divisions inside News Corp Australia. So sales and News Live. Just to compare and contrast the two, what are we talking here? Yeah, so, uh, News Corp's network sales, which is all their, their national network of newspapers. So mm -hmm. when people buy their daily newspapers, that network sales team that look after all those sales, mm -hmm. is going to be merged with News Life Media, which is magazines. a lot of digital property ship okay. and magazines. Okay. So Vogue Australia, GQ, uh, Bull of the Food Mags, Donna Hay, right. uh, stuff like that. Um, with their digital properties, news.com.au, okay. you know, the biggest news website in Australia. So, yep. yeah, they're going to just try and have one big offer and say, look, advertisers, now you can reach this whole this whole group of assets. Right. With, uh, as they used to say, one phone call, but it's probably more than just a quick well, email. These very, very true, yes. Uh, heaven forbid that there would be a, a voice uh, to, to greet you. Zumu. Now, is this, is this a threat to the to, um, to play school in any shape or form? The, no. The iconic, nothing, no, nothing no relax, sort of relax. But right. David Haslington, right. who's been around the business for a long time, was chairman of um, Nine Entertainment for a while, okay. not so long ago. And um, he's, he's big, he's got quite, he's got probably four or five different companies in the production sector. One of them is this new Zumu brand, so it's it's uh, all about animals, for okay. animals for children. Right. Doing very well, all in different parts of the world. Okay. And it's on Telstra TV here now. Okay. Sounds like a variation of Zuma. <laughs> Jacob, but no, that's another, that's a country, that's South Africa, that's the yes. president. Optus, yes. uh, pricing on Premier League. This is yep. the English football franchise. Uh, what are we looking at? Is People have reacted badly mm. to this. So mm. to get the Premier League, which now Optus now own the rights to it, yeah. you've got to... If you, you've got to be a, you've got to be an Optus customer. Well, no surprise mm. there. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't have bought it otherwise. Makes surely. Sense. Yeah. If your bill is under eighty-five dollars, it's going to cost you fifteen dollars a month. Or if your bill is over eighty-five dollars, free, but you're going to have to pay. Oh. You know, so there's no extra charge is the correct way to word it. Fair enough. Look, a lot of backlash. I, I'm not surprised. I mean, I don't mm. think people... What, what, what do you want? They're not going to buy these rights and then give it no. away, are they? True. So, That's true. But and, and a lot of people are already Optus customers. So you'd think there'd be some vote of thanks. Well, no, I don't know about thanks, but, <laughs> okay. but not, you know, not... They're getting not some not real bad feedback. People saying, oh, yeah. it's going to be the PR disaster of the year. Right. Something, you know. But I'm not, I'm not sure how else they could have structured it. Well, if maybe, you're a big mm -hmm. fan, mm -hmm. I suppose you've, if you're not an Optus customer at all, you, you've really got to turn over. That, that will force and you. That is, yeah. For kicking and screaming. Yeah. But then again, it's, this is just a commercial decision. Optus mm -hmm. aren't out there to further the... Well, Further the exactly. cause of um, <laughs> English football in no, Australia. They're there really to build true. their customer base. So, There's yeah. no emotional uh, link whatsoever. Mm. Uh, speaking of emotions, uh, the ratings. Time for that little soft suit shuffle into that part of uh, this week. Let's animate into some figures. There we have free to wear. Yep. Goodbye to my kitchen. Yep, this is absolutely yep. the last uh, time, unless they chuck to together run. some sort of special. Yep. Uh, this is the last time we'll see that this year. Uh, segwaying into uh, Married at First Sight for Nines. Uh, probably the first time they've been in the top five for a little while with something other than the news. So next week you would be expecting to see MasterChef on this list. The Voice, right. MasterChef, right. probably won't see House Rules. Okay. But, um, there you have and it. And there you go, yeah, there's the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Another Married at First Sight bit there for nine. Let's animate into subscription. Collingwood and Nassenden. Yeah, I think there's, what have we got, three AFL and two NRL this week, just for a little bit of a change. Week 18. But actually, the number one show which actually outrated any sport this week mm. was Game of Thrones, which... Um, well, there it is. Yeah. You surprised at that one? No, no, not at all. It's just so, that global so... sort of 
Fair enough. It's not really hype, is it? But the global anticipation. So the showcase, do we know what that amounts to? Is that, is that just sort of like a, a big bang? Uh, well, that's the channel. Yeah, no, that's, so it, that's, that's it. the channel it's on. Standalone. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Okay. Yep. And um, just, just does fantastic business for them. And look, they're all um, those top four shows, yeah. the, well, three of those top five, the other three are all Foxtel commissions. Well, so that, so speaking of number four there as well, Real Housewives of Melbourne, our entertainment reporter, Shelley Lee, has been speaking with Foxtel's executive director of TV, Brian Walsh, about the success of that franchise. Continues to be the number one non-sports program on Foxtel over the weekend, and I think that says, uh, that says a lot about how the show appeals to people. There's a lot of speculation about the Real Housewives of Sydney. There is. Can you comment <laughs> on any of that? We are looking at uh, developing another franchise and Sydney's the uh, is the market that we're going to move into next and that process of auditions is underway. The most fundamentally important thing about housewives is the chemistry, getting the right women to work with each other or against each other. And I think we've proven that with Melbourne and hopefully we'll do the same with Sydney. Wonderfully filmed, James. Yes. Well, lots of anticipation. It would be Sydney, but a great get by Shelley there. First time um, Brian Walsh has actually confirmed, yes, we're going ahead with Sydney. They're doing auditions right. now. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if Foxtel keep both Melbourne and the Sydney franchises going. So they both perform so well for you. Yeah, it just creates some competitive tension, mm -hmm. uh, like it or not. The uh, Kettering incident on Showcase now, a date for that one, July the 4th. Yeah, July 4th, it's coming. It was made, um, probably made nearly two years ago. They f actually filmed this. It was going to be on last year, didn't quite fit into the schedule. They thought it was a great winter program, so we winter kicks off and we're going to get it in July. Gosh, it's like summer though, <laughs> as, as we speak. Presumably the season will modify at some stage. So now we've plowed through all of that, you can get out and have a little bit of sun yourself, wherever you're joining us from. We will see you next week. Thanks, Carson. Thank you so much, and we look forward to your company then, of course.